Welcome everyone to the final episode of the tutorial series. I can't believe it's here man, that's crazy. I want to end it with a bang, so we're going to make a super sick 3D model today. We are going to make a keyboard, but not like an instrument looking keyboard, like an actual, you know, keyboard keyboard. This is going to be a pretty complex model, and I'm going to try to make it look relatively photorealistic. I mean, for the last models I've made, they've all been pretty low poly, but this one's going to look pretty real. And it's going to combine a lot of the skills that I've showed you guys so far in this series, so it should be a great great model to finish off the series with. Let's go. First off, get rid of the light in the camera since we're just not going to need them. Next, press Shift A and add in the reference image for the keyboard. Whatever one you use, just make sure that it's perfectly 2D like this, because it's just going to make things so much easier. Now take your cube and scale it down on the Y axis. We want this to be pretty dang thin. I just realized everything's like vertical instead of horizontal right now, that's kind of tripping me out. So let's just press the image real quick, RX, negative 90, and the cube, RX, negative 90. That's a little better. Yep. Feels right side up again. Now we just want the cube to match the reference image. So scale it out nice and far. Uh, let's see, yeah, that looks pretty centered, yeah. Scale it up as well, just like that, very nice. Let's check it out in wireframe. Uh, yeah, it's lining up pretty good. Okay, now tap into edit mode. Let's grab these edges right here and on the other side too. Go back into our top view and just press control B. But you'll notice if we start to bevel this, it's gonna be all weird and like rectangular and we can fix that pretty easily. So press control Z to get rid of that. Go back into object mode now and press control A and apply all transformations. Uh, this resets all the transformations of the cube and just, it, I mean, it's the solution to so many problems. Remember, control A, apply transformations and your life is saved. Now, if we go back into edit mode, top 2D view, you can see the bevel works nice and easy and it should align with the keyboard right about there. Beautiful. Now it needs some keycaps. Shift A and add a nice, beautiful cube. I'm not going to bevel it just yet since we're going to have to duplicate this a lot of times and if we have to scale it after beveling it, it's going to screw up the bevel a lot. So let's just do it at the end. Scale this guy down just like this and try to match that keycap as best you can. About right there looks pretty perfect. Now let's just duplicate it a whole lot of times. To speed this up, just press Shift D and now G and X to lock it to the X axis. You can slide it around, center it along a keycap and just press to confirm it. Oh, all right. Well, it took a fat minute, but I think we've finally finished all the keycaps. So I go into solid view. Yep, we've covered the entire board and keycaps. All I've done is just taken a cube, duplicated it a ton of times, and just scaled it down to fit the size of the keycaps. Uh, these aren't like mathematically perfect measurements. Like they're just manually lined up. So it's nothing too hard. But now we've got to bevel all of these sides. So I'm going to press numpad three for a side 2D view to select all the cubes just like this. But you'll notice some of them have bigger bevels than others. So so all the ones that have like this crazy curve on them, I'm just going to deselect and we're going to do those after this. And of course to deselect, you're just going to hold down control and box select the one that you want to get rid of. Okay, now that I've got all the non-curvy bevels, I'm just going to join them all into the same object and take them into edit mode. Now we can press numpad 3, go to edge select up here, a uh, wireframe mode, and just box select all these side edges right here. Oh yep, yeah, that's exactly what we're looking for. Now control B and the whole thing is going to explode because we're doing a ton of things at once. Almost forgot as well. Control A, all transformations every single time. Control B, beautiful. Bevel them out to about right there. Oh, that looks gorgeous. Oh yeah, that's exactly what we wanted. Now let's grab all those curvy cubes, join them together, tap into edit mode, and uh, numpad three, and let's just bevel them. But now we're going to want to deselect the ones with the really weird edges. So I'll just deselect all those right now. It should be the outside edge for all of them. And back in a top view, I can just bevel these to match the reference image just like like that. Very nice. And now let's grab those outside edges that were causing us so much trouble and bevel those. Control B, crank you way down. Oh yeah, it lines up perfectly. So that's what we're working with. Uh, this looks pretty dang good so far. I'm going to make all the keycaps one mesh because I think that's going to come in handy later. Now let's just scale them down. Let's just scale these down because I don't want them like popping out of the keyboard quite so much. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to shade them all smooth uh, under the object data tab, go to normals and auto smooth. Now, same thing with the base of the keyboard. I'm just going to shade it smooth and auto smooth it. Now, I want to do some stuff to the bottom of this keyboard, like add some stands, you know, some cool designs and stuff. But I think I'm going to have to rotate the whole keyboard like, but I think I'm going to have to rotate the whole keyboard like this way to do that. And I want to do that after I UV unwrap the whole thing because rotating and UV unwrapping just those.
those two should never go together. Speaking of UV unwrapping, let's do it. Grab all those keycaps, go into the shading tab and give them a new material. Press add, search, image texture, click on it, and just plug the color of that into the base color of the principled BSDF node. And now give it a new image and make it this. Now give it a new image and make it that keyboard reference image that we were using. Oh, that looks crazy. Now go into the UV editing tab, select everything, press numpad 7 on your keyboard, press U and project from view. And now we just gotta line this whole thing up. Okay, this looks pretty lined up, but there might be a couple errors, but there's a super easy way to fix that. If I go to this menu up here and press individual origins, check out what happened. Now I can scale and it's just gonna scale by the individual objects instead of the whole mesh. I'm just gonna scale them down slightly so we're only getting the white parts of the mesh in there. And on the actual mesh down here, that looks pretty perfect, honestly. I'm just gonna hit numpad three, go to wireframe mode and select all the faces that aren't on the top because we don't want these to be like random distorted colors. I'm gonna go back to median point, press S and zero to scale them down to nothing. And let's just put them over a nice shade of white. Oh, beautiful. Now you can just manually go through this whole keyboard, see if there's any like little black edges, just click on the individual face and move it back to the white part. This looks pretty perfect, honestly. Now let's grab the base of the keyboard, go into the shader editor and do the exact same thing. This time when we go to the UV editor, just select everything, S and zero to scale it down to a single point, And let's just put it over one of the gray parts of the mesh. That looks super good, honestly, exactly like a real keyboard. I don't really like the way the arrow key looks right now, so let's fix that. Go into edit mode, select all the top faces, right click and hit dissolve faces. Now press K to use the knife tool, select the center vertice on this side, and just draw a straight line right over to the center vertice on the other side, click, press E, and press enter. Now with that new edge created selected, just press control B and bring it out all the way until you can't anymore. With your mouse wheel, give it like maybe two edges in the center. Now click, select those two center edges and scale them down just a little bit and give them one more bevel. And I'm also going to bevel these top edges to make it look a little bit smoother. And now if we go back out of edit mode, you can see we get a nice clean curve in between those two arrow keys and it looks a lot better. We might have to turn on caps lock, so add a cylinder real quick. Shade it smooth, bring it over here and scale it way down. Make sure it just covers up that gray area. Now give it a new material, set the surface type to emission, and change the base color to something like neon green. Now with the click of a button, you guys can turn caps lock on and off depending on what you want. I'm gonna join the whole keyboard together now. Now for the back of the keyboard, let's go to face select, select this bottom face and press I to inset it just a little bit. Uh, extrude up along normals, oh, careful not to hit the keycaps. Inset it one more time and now extrude downward and scale it in. Kind of a cool design, honestly. Now I'm gonna add another cube, press S and X to make it a little bit more thin, S and Y as well. And I'm just gonna bring this front edge up quite a bit. Now press Control 2 to give it a subdivision surface modifier and crank that way up. Now just add a ton of loop cuts to it to make it look a little bit more smooth and not quite so wobbly. Nice, that looks so slick. Now apply that modifier and shade this guy smooth. Now in a side view, we can scale him down just like this. Uh, let's rotate the entire keyboard up a little bit and just add this guy nice and easily to the back. Now since the keyboard is at the origin of the viewport, we can just press Control A on this little guy, apply all transformations, uh, click on that 3D cursor, press Shift C if it's not already already in the center of your viewport, and now just mirror this guy to the other side of the mesh, just like that. Now we can apply it, and I think our keyboard might just be done. Let's see, we got pieces in the back, we got a nice slick design in the back as well, we got all the keycaps nice and textured, and it looks pretty dang real. Shift A, camera, control alt 0, G, G shift Z, move it around a bit, G and Z again, get this nice and close, oh yeah. Go to render view, oh uh, I think Eevee should be good. Let's actually move the camera just a little bit closer, I really want to showcase that keyboard. Now press shift A, add a sunlight, uh, go to this lighting setting, make that angle 180, turn that strength all the way up to 10. Actually, that looks a little bit bright. Let's turn it down. Let's turn it down to like 0.6. Oh yeah. Now we're going to add in a spotlight and we're only going to want the spotlight covering a small portion of the keyboard so we can move it pretty far out of the way. Now give it like 200,000 power or something crazy so we can see exactly which parts of the keyboard is going to cover. And yeah, let's go like the second half right there. Change the power down to about 20,000 should be good, and let's give it a nice little beige material. I lied, 2000 power is way better. Now we got some adaptive lighting here. You can see it's dark, and then it's going to slowly fade to a little bit more of an orangish, like bright light, just because of that spotlight. Let's rotate the keyboard as well, have it facing the camera a little bit more. And of course, render settings, film, and make sure that's transparent. 
And finally, let's give it a test render and see how our keyboard turned out. Don't forget to render a picture. You're just going to press render at the top and render image. Oh, dang, that's not bad at all. Well, for the culmination of an eight episode tutorial series, I'd say that's pretty dang good. I appreciate all you guys sticking around this far and making it to the very end of the series. And of course, don't forget to go over to Creality Cloud, look at my post and reply with the sick looking keyboards that you guys made. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see y'all later.